any deck officer that values their life will want to understand free surface moment. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. I want to tell you a story. It's purely fictional. In 1850, the tall ship Unreal was sailing out from Baltimore, Maryland. They left Baltimore with only ballast in their holds, intending to take on cargo once they reached India. They set full sail, leaving the harbor on a gentle wafting breeze. But shortly after clearing Chesapeake Bay, the weather grew nasty. That gentle breeze swapped for a howling gale. Caught with little warning, the ship lay sieged. Her full suit of sails suddenly heeled her over until the leeward rail disappeared under the water. The crew scrambled from their bunks, dashing up the mast to take in sail. And amidst that buzzing hum of orders, they heard a deep groaning sound rising from the bowels of the ship. The entire crew fell still, realizing the sudden danger they faced. A massive crack echoed from the hold. The ballast stones had shifted. The weights in the hold that kept the ship upright broke free of their restraints. Those massive boulders all tumbled to the leeward side of the ship. And that was it. Without any protest, the ship flipped over, kind of gruesome. How does this fictional story relate to modern ships? All modern ships carry different liquids and tanks. Fuel, sewage, drinking water, ballast water, etc. And without proper management, the shifting liquid in those tanks acts just like shifting ballast stones. The deck officer that wants to live tomorrow will want to understand free surface moment today. First things first, free surface moment is not sloshing. These are two separate concerns. With sloshing, we are worried about the momentum of the liquid as it slams from side to side in the tank. Normally, this is only a concern for large cargo tanks in a violent sea. A great example is liquid natural gas carriers. They carry LNG as a cargo, massive tanks that stretch almost the entire width of the ship. Now just imagine a bowl of liquid the size of a building. Several hundred tons of LNG surging towards you in a massive wave. That's the kind of thing we're dealing with when I say momentum. And when that much liquid starts moving, stopping can be difficult. That's the problem of sloshing. As these internal waves impact against the tank wall, they generate massive pressure spikes. Without proper reinforcement, these pressure spikes can dent the tank walls, and repeated impacts may even punch through the tank. For something less exotic than LNG, we use tank baffles. Now, there's a good example of those on your screen. Tank baffles still allow liquid to flow slowly between them, but for fast motion, like you would get in a violent sea, the liquid cannot squeeze through those tiny holes fast enough. Suddenly, the baffles behave like solid walls. The baffles segment the tank and break up the liquid momentum into manageable chunks. This is how we typically deal with tank sloshing. However, tank baffles do not work for free surface moment. Free surface moment is a concern for nearly every commercial ship out there, and even for some pleasure yachts. To understand free surface moment, we need to examine how a partially filled tank behaves when the vessel heals over. To simplify things, let's have a basic scenario where the vessel starts with its center of gravity right on center line when it's sitting upright, and it doesn't have any partially filled tanks. So there's no free surface moment at all. As the vessel heals over, two important things change. Number one, the center of gravity for the ship, it moves horizontally to the side because it's following an arc. But in all cases, that CG remains aligned with the ship's center line. Let's see what changes when we put in a partially filled tank. Partially filled tanks are what generate free surface moment. 
If it's totally full or if it's totally empty, you're fine. Anything in between, you have free surface moment. As the ship heals over, the tank contents also shift. They roll downhill and move to one side. Here's what the critical thing to know. The contents of that tank, they count as part of the ship's center of gravity. Now, in this case, the center of gravity does not remain aligned with the center line. It goes farther to one side. This sideways shift is called the free surface effect, and the exact quantity of shift depends on a property for the tank, known as the free surface moment. The free surface moment is a calculated property specific to each tank. It changes depending on the tank dimensions and fill levels. The more free surface moment you have, the farther the center of gravity shifts as the heel increases. This starts to get too complicated to keep track of. Given all of these variables, we needed a way to simplify the representation of this center of gravity shift. Thankfully, mathematics provided an elegant simplification. It turns out that that horizontal shift due to the free surface moment that can be mimicked by raising the ship's vertical center of gravity. This higher VCG, it only happens on paper. It's not a real effect. And to remind ourselves of that, we call this increased position the virtual VCG. And here's the fun part. As the ship heals over, the horizontal position of that virtual VCG, it exactly mimics the horizontal position of the real ship's center of gravity plus the free surface effect. Using the virtual VCG, ship operators can incorporate the effects of free surface moment and stay within safe operating limits. That's the goal that we're trying to get to. Okay, so now we know the basic science behind this, and it doesn't seem too bad. If you can calculate the free surface moment for a tank, you can get the virtual VCG, and now you're corrected for the free surface effects. Well, we get a bit of complexity introduced. Everything so far has been a single tank, and the free surface moment for a single tank seems simple enough. But a commercial ship doesn't have one tank. It has dozens of tanks. And as the ship heals over, all of them shift in the same direction. That cumulative effect of multiple tanks, that's the problem it can add up to become a major danger for the ship. You might be thinking, well, okay, that's fine. Just multiply it by however many tanks there are. Can't do that. Remember that free surface moment is not standardized. It changes with the tank dimensions and even with the fill level of the tank. That generates hundreds of potential combinations for ship stability. And the rub of it is that very few of those are actually critical cases that could spell disaster it's impractical for a ship's officer to consider all of those different combinations when planning their voyage. Instead, naval architects normally present a simplified view of the free surface moment and use this free simplified view when presenting the stability limits. So the first simplification that we do is naval architects, they will examine all the fill levels for each tank, and they're going to report out its maximum free surface moment. So now, rather than asking what's the fill level for the tank, okay, let me go look it up in a table to find its free surface moment, it's either on or off. We consider each tank to only have one value of free surface moment, the maximum that it can possibly generate. It's either on or off. It either has its maximum free surface moment or none at all, and we don't worry about the values in between. The second simplification concerns dealing with multiple tanks. I want you to consider a ship with a dozen different tanks on board just 12. Now, if we were to allow any combination of tanks to be full or partially slack, that would create 66 potential scenarios to evaluate. That's still too many. We need a strategy to reduce the total number of combinations. The general guidance here is to plan for the minimum number of slack tanks. The procedure generally goes like this. Step one, examine the vessel and create a list of every type of liquid carried in a tank. Step two, for each liquid, I want you to find the one tank with the largest free surface moment. So you go through and say, there are six different tanks that carry diesel oil. Which tank has the largest free surface moment? 
Remember, we've already calculated what that value is for each tank. Step three, you repeat this process for each liquid. Find the largest tank and then assume that only that largest tank is slack for that one liquid. Step four, you add up the free surface moment from all of those largest tanks, which creates the maximum worst case scenario. That's the combination that would create the largest amount of free surface moment because we've said you can only have one tank slack at a time. Any other selected tank combinations would be less than that maximum. And disclaimer here, I do want to warn everyone that the application of free surface moment, it's actually more complicated when you're applying the actual regulations. I'm intentionally presenting an oversimplified view here to focus on the main concepts rather than the detailed rules. So we've taken the conservative approach and it's got some major advantages. This method allows ship officers to use all the different tank types on board. They have all of that flexibility and they can use any loading scenario without considering the hundreds of combinations that are possible in those different tanks. Breaking the rules. The problem with simplification is that it creates an opportunity for misuse. The approach I just outlined before, it goes into the stability booklet for a commercial ship. That's what we base everything on. Granted, there are variations depending on the regulations for your country. But most stability booklets work this way, and most of them have a line in there of warning that goes something like this. The master of the vessel must minimize the number of slack tanks at all times. Now, when you were reading it, you probably just thought that was another boilerplate engineering cover our butt sort of thing. But it actually has to do with all of these simplifications that we made for the free surface moment. The calculations and the operating limits assume that that maximum level, but the ship operators could easily exceed that maximum if they're not careful. How could they do this? By having more than one tank slack for each type of liquid. Classic example for this one, is the ballast tanks. Vessel operators, they frequently use two slack tanks to trim the ship, one at the bow and one at the stern. That works great for ship operations, no arguments there. But the operators have technically exceeded the ship's stability limits. They've exceeded that simplification for free surface moment. Now, does this mean your ship's going to flip over and die? Probably not. If we go back to that story of the tall ship Unreal and the shifting ballast stones, creating multiple slack tanks for each liquid is more or less equivalent to only shifting some of the ballast stones. The ship's not going to immediately capsize, and you very well could still be safe. But in extreme scenarios, that ship is now going to deliver less stability than you expected, less stability than the stability booklet predicted. And those scenarios of extremes, that's exactly when your life depends on every bit of stability that the ship can muster. The good news is that you have a simple solution to this problem of exceeding free surface limits. Ask a naval architect to recompute your stability booklet, but this time specify that you do not want them to follow the regulatory limits for the simplifications. Instead of following the regulatory limits, you're going to tell them how you want to use the vessel. For example, instead of using just one tank for each type of liquid, you would tell the naval architect that you want to have two or three ballast tanks available for flexible operations. Specify the combinations that matter to you. The naval architect can then recompute for additional slack tanks. The naval architect can then recompute for additional slack tanks and update your limits. Now, I do want to point out that there are some exceptions to this. Some ships are already operating at their stability limit, and any additional free surface moment would reduce your cargo capacity. But for many of your ships, it's just a paperwork exercise, and with those additional tanks, you now get the flexibility to operate your vessel sensibly and the reassurance that it's going to perform at its specified limits when your life depends on it. Just like ballast stones, free surface moment, it sits on scene, reducing the stability of your ship. Only now, it comes as a math equation and paperwork. Free surface moment is one of the most common elements of ship operation, and it's one of the most frequently misunderstood. So putting aside the physics, there are just a few key points that you need to remember about free surface moment. 
Number one, tank sloshing and free surface moment are different concerns, and tank baffles do not help with free surface moment. Number two, most ships come with a calculated maximum limit for their free surface moment, and that should be specified for your individual vessel. Number three, the most common mistake that ends up in you exceeding your free surface moment limit, that's when you have slack tanks for multiple ballast tanks or multiple fuel tanks. So if you're seeing that in your loadout where you have more than one of those tanks slack, go back, check your stability booklet. And that's number four. Check the stability booklet to understand the limits on slack tanks for your ship. The important element for you is not so much the number of the total free surface moment. That's just a number. The part you really care about is that list of tanks that they assumed were slack. That's going to tell you about the flexibility of your tank configurations. Specifically look for multiple sets of tanks carrying the same liquid. That is your guide for how to safely operate the ship as far as tank configuration goes. The ship was designed to save your life in extreme events. So please, let it do its job. Let it keep you safe and remember your free surface moment limits. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. Whew, I have a lot of footage to cut out. Oh, you're still here. Thanks for watching. And did you know that you can do more with DMS? Check out the website to find more articles, tutorials, and engineering services. When it comes to maritime engineering, if you want to do more, give me a call and let's see what we can achieve together.